Hi everybody, thanks again for joining me today at Simple Art at Home. I'm Laura Houston and you've tuned in to the 340 show which is geared towards first graders, second graders, third graders. However, you could be in any grade to enjoy this episode and to participate along with me. Um, even grown-ups and sixth graders might love this show. So this is just a suggestion of the development level, maybe early, intermediate, intermediate. Um, for today's lesson, uh, we are going to talk about um, what makes us happy. And um, I have a quick show for you. Um, oh, but first, I want to remind you, um, every day on the Anaheim Elementary YouTube channel, uh, for AESD at home, we will have shows for you at 3 o'clock every day. And on Monday, it's Dr. Downing or Dr. Grace with Hello Fellow Kids. Tuesday, it's uh, Let's Make Some Games with Mr. Corey Robertson. Uh, Wednesday is Making Music with Mr. Mark Anderson. Uh, Thursday is me uh, with these three shows, Simple Art at Home. And Friday is Vote the Game. Um, where you get to see your um, principals or teachers or vice principals. It's really fun. I've watched that. So uh, before we start, we are going to go ahead and watch a little, actually it's a book, uh, about what makes us happy. Let's, so let's watch. Hi, I'm art teacher Laura Houston, and today I'm going to read a book to you called Taking a Bath with the Dog and Other Things That Make Me Happy by Scott Menchin. I miss your smile today, sweet pea. What would make you happy? I don't know. What makes you happy? Taking a bath. What makes you happy? Counting. What makes you happy? Running around. What makes you happy? Shoes. What makes you happy? Playing with my hair. What makes you happy? Digging. What makes you happy? Stripes. What makes you happy? Sleeping upside down. What makes you happy? Smiling. Hmm. Sweet Pea, you're smiling. Did you find out what makes you happy? Yes. I'm happy when I tickle my baby brother, jump rope, bake cookies with faces, ride my bike, chew peas one at a time, make a wish, stay up late, paint on eggs, make faces, hold my breath underwater, stick finger puppets on my toes, sing, slurp spaghetti, look at my reflection, dance with my shadow, play dress up, sit in my dad's chair, blow bubbles, drink tea with grandma, play drums, pretend I'm a monster, swim at night, Lick sprinkles off ice cream, and I'm happy when I'm taking a bath with the dog. Mom, you're smiling. You must be happy too. The end. Okay, so um, I hope that that book helped you think about the things that make you happy. Uh, before we start our activity, I just realized I said the wrong uh, activity for Friday on um, AESD. So Friday is both the game, but it, I was confusing it with old school, new school. That's the one where 
the principals and vice principals and teachers come on. So this Friday, I believe you kids, the students get to vote which game Mr. Corey Robertson will, will play. So um, with that, um, before we start, you're going to need something round to trace, either a small bowl or a salad plate. Um, you're going to need a piece of paper, a pencil, and something to color with. So grab your crayons if you have watercolors, get those. And remember, you can pause this video at any time to go get supplies that you may need, and I will be right here when you get back. Okay, I'll meet you at the table. So before we start uh, the art project, I always like to show parents or students what materials I use. Um, this is uh, watercolor paper, and it's 20 sheets. This was $3.97. Watercolor paper needs to be thicker than regular computer paper, otherwise the paper will fall apart. Um, this is a better deal. This is called cardstock, and I got 80 sheets for $3.97. And cardstock can also be used as watercolor paper. So that's what I'm using um, for today's activity. So what I did here is I cut down a regular piece of paper because I like, sometimes I like painting on a format that's more of a square shape. So remember, you don't always have to use rectangular paper um, for your art projects. And so I'm just going to take my bowl and a pencil and trace around because what we're going to do is we are going to draw something in the center um, that makes us happy, okay? So still be thinking about that. I'm gonna show you some examples of what I did earlier, what I already prepared for you. So here's an example of a little dog because I love animals and animals make me happy. I also used soft colors or colors that I like because color is important too. You're going to want to choose colors that are your favorite colors or that make you happy as well. Here's another example of something that makes me happy. I love swimming underwater and especially summertime right now when it's really hot. Uh, who doesn't love swimming? Notice the bright colors that I used and the blue background. I used blue in both of these because I thought um, blue would be a nice background in each. And then for this one, birthdays make me happy. I love cake and celebrating and blowing out candles. So here's another one. I did kind of a, a party atmosphere design with this one too. So. Remember, um, this is your art project. You can draw whatever you want in the center of your circle. Um, I think I will demonstrate, how, how about I draw a little cat in here because I love cats. And if you want to draw whatever you want, you know, maybe popsicles or ice cream cone or something like that makes you happy. Think about the examples in the book um, because this part is up to you. This is your art. So if you want to follow along with me, you certainly can if you like cats too. You know what, maybe I'll put the dog up here too because if you like dogs, maybe you want to draw this little guy instead of the cat. So I'm just going to start sort of in the center here and I'm just going to draw the shape of a head and I will add some ears here and I will outline little triangles in there. I'm going to go over all of this uh, with a black pen later. And I'm going to put some big, round, friendly eyes here on my cat. And I'll put some eyeballs up here, like the irises up here, like he's looking up. And a little upside down triangle shaped nose and a sweet little mouth. And maybe ooh, some big whiskers today. And let's draw the body. So we're gonna keep this a simple cartoon style drawing of a cat. So I'm just keeping it very simple-ish. I'm gonna draw his little feet in front of him like he's just sitting like a good little cat. I'm not getting into any trouble right now. There's his little paws. And then we notice how it looks like his feet are in front. And then we'll draw a tail that comes around here, perhaps. 
something like this. And then I always like to draw a horizon line behind if I have uh, something or someone sitting. I'm just going to use my ruler, but I'm going to make sure it doesn't go over the front of the cat. Let's see, maybe more of a halfway point. And that allows me to add different colors as well. So it kind of breaks up the big circle. Okay, so there is a basic outline of a cat. Now at this point, if you want to use your crayons, you can use crayons, marking pens, colored pencils. I'm going to use my Crayola watercolors. Um, I do not recommend the brush that comes with watercolors. It's worth it to invest in your own brush. And sometimes I just like to have a paper towel handy like that for dabbing. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to paint um, the cat. And I'm just going to start. That's kind of a it's looking kind of yellow, but I'm going to add other colors into it. I like watercolors because they're pretty fast. Like you can get a lot of coverage done quickly. And that's And then once this dries, I will go over it with a, a black fine ultra fine point Sharpie. Remember, you want to choose pleasant colors. Since we're, we're painting something that makes us happy, you'll want to choose colors that match that feeling. So that's why I'm, I'm going to choose colors like that you see behind uh, the dog. So we are all in the middle of a pandemic. We are not at home. I mean, we are not at school. We are at home. We're not at school and we can't play with our friends. Um, so, you know, you might feel kind of restless or sad on some days. Um, but art can make you feel better. You know, you can sit down, I'm adding a little bit of brown color right now. You can sit down and draw something that makes you feel happy and you might find that you actually feel a little better. And I like the idea of creating an art journal. And with an art journal, you can maybe paint something in it every day for five days or so, and then reflect back upon it. Okay, so I'm gonna add, add a little color around his face over here just to make it look more interesting add some depth and add some color on his tail see how i'm just mixing colors together and they they'll dry nicely that's kind of the look that you get with watercolors there we go let's see Okay, I don't want to do too much right now because I want to make sure this cat dries in time so I can add pen to the top of him. Oh, what about his little nose? Let's use red. I'm dabbing on my paper towel to kind of absorb some of the water because the nose is going, going to be like a tiny little bit of color there. There we go little red nose why not you know this is your drawing you can use any color that you want okay so now i'm going to fill in um, this background i'm going to use a nice blue color blue is my favorite color it's a color that makes me happy so i hope that uh, what you're doing today i hope that you take pictures of your work and send it in to me, email me. My email is right there on the screen. I keep it up always. And what I like to do is then next week, I showcase student artwork on the episode. So hey, if you wanna see your work on YouTube, I will show it. Oh, here comes my dog. Speaking of 
cute animals. Did you hear him shake his collar? I don't know, maybe. Okay, I'm just doing a quick covering here because I wanna make sure I get most of this finished while you're with me for this short time today. I'm really curious to see what makes you happy and what you decide to, um, to draw in the middle of your circle. Like I said, you don't even, you know, you don't have to use watercolors, even if you just have colored pencils or crayons. I think you have crayons from school. I think you pick them up in a, in a, a pack. So use those crayons. Or if you are lucky enough to get some watercolors, maybe start saving up if you get money for doing uh, chores around the house. Maybe save it up and buy some art supplies if you enjoy doing art. I have another episode that's coming on the air right after this one. We will start at 420 and it'll be more like um, early advanced intermediate advance you can still do this so it doesn't matter what grade you're in you can still watch and and participate see how the cat is drying and uh, the colors are kind of settling in there I'm gonna put make sure I get some purple in here like he's sitting maybe he's sitting on a purple blanket there we go okay now for the background you can do anything that you want. On these, I did stripes going out from the center and I repeated the colors. I used a pattern, so if you look carefully. On the dog, I did swirlies. I think I'll do something similar with um, the cat, but more just softer swirls. So I'm gonna start out with some, kind of some dots of different sizes. this and then I will go around those dots let me get some let me pick up some orange color here and it's okay if you're using watercolors if the colors blend in together that's what they're supposed to do it's okay if they kind of you know they fade into one another there we go I wonder if you're watching if you participated in the face mask contest um, those entries, the deadline has been extended, and the deadline actually, they extended it to tomorrow. So if you still want to do a face mask, you can. That design, it's on, um, it's not on this channel. It's on my personal YouTube channel. If you just look up Laura Houston, Simple Art at Home, that's where that video is. But it was also in a seesaw link assignment, the esteemed Wednesday homework last week, you can find it there. You can email me if you can't find it and I will email it to you. I can email you the tutorial, the video on how to, how to go about doing it. I check my email all the time. So I'm just doing some patterns here in the background and notice I'm just, I just keep, you know, filling this in a little larger and larger. I'm doing very soft colors. I want the background to really kind of just fade. I don't, like the background's just going to be, you know, pretty soft here. I'm gonna add some green. That one's brighter. Okay. I can soften it by just adding water. See, I'm not even dipping it in the paint right now. I'm just adding water. Actually, it looks nice. Just, and I'm just having my pattern still go off the page. And then you can also do thin lines with your paintbrush like that. I want to make it somewhat, um, somewhat of a pattern so that it repeats. There we go. Yeah, I thought that uh, that book was pretty hilarious. And I'll show it to you one more time. I, I found it on Amazon. It's a paperback. 
Let's see. Oh, I have it right here. Um, Scott Mention is the author if you want to find it. It really has great pictures inside and I really liked this page. It has great inspirational. This one has a lot of great inspirational photos of what, or draw illustrations, I mean, not photos, of what you might want to draw. It's a fun book. Hmm, let's see, I don't want to use purple or blue in my background because I use purple and blue in the center. So maybe I will add a different color orange. How about this? Do these kinds of shapes. So I'm still just kind of filling it in. I'm going to also outline. The best part, I think, is outlining with the the black marker. So if you have a black colored pencil or a black pen in the house, you might want to get it ready because we're going to outline next. If you're using paint, you have to wait um, for the paint to dry. You can also use oil pastels. I forgot to mention that. They're very vibrant and pretty too. Okay, so I think I will fill in, let's see, since I have that green there, maybe I'll just put some little green in the center. Some of these dots. It's more of like a real happy, a happy photo. A happy, not a photo, I don't know why I keep saying that. It's a happy painting or happy drawing. Hmm, let's see. I'm going to fill in some of this background with yellow. I think it always, it looks better if you don't leave a lot of white. There we go. See how it's all kind of coming together now? I'll go this one over. There we go. I might, like this space right here does look a little bit empty, so I might put a couple of things over here. Let's see, maybe I'll put in some more orange right here. And maybe a little bit of green. Okay, so I'm just going to let this dry and I think I can start outlining the cat. I'll just test it. Yeah, the cat seems pretty dry. The, outline, the background is still wet, but that's why I, sorry, I'm letting this air out, I'm trying to let it dry. Okay, so let's start outlining our cat. So this is ultra fine point Sharpie and the tip is very small. Yeah, I can tell that the background is still wet. I'm putting my hand on it. Ideally, I wouldn't do this right away, but since I'm doing this for you on this episode, I'm kind of rushing through it just to show you the process. And we have some ears there. So I'll show you a little trick by having the ears come down in front like that and drawing this there, it makes it look like the ears are in front. There we go. We've got some whiskers. I drew really long whiskers on this cat. That's fun. And remember again, this is your drawing so you can make it however you want. There's his little feet. Did I mention I have three cats? Yes, I have three cats and a dog. Notice how I drew the feet in front of the body. So I didn't have that line. If I would have drawn that line in front, um, that would not look that way. So now we're gonna do the tail. So I'm going to continue that. And I think I'll outline this line too. It's okay to turn your paper sideways. 
And I feel like you get a straighter line if you drag your whole arm instead of trying to just move your, your fingers like that. Okay, I do want to outline the circle, but I wanna use my um, thicker Sharpie to outline the circle. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna do it a little bit at a time. Now, the way that I'm doing this, this is just a suggestion. Maybe you want to use a different shape. Maybe you're going to do two things in the middle that make you happy. You could do two smaller circles. But notice how um, the background, all of this that I did, it's messy, but at the same time, it kind of just fades out and it just adds to the overall design. Whereas the little cat, you know, he's the main focus because we outlined him in black. I think I'm going to color in his little eyeballs with black. Okay, I think I'm just about done. I like that better. There we go. Okay. And always be sure if you are painting to clean off your brush. Otherwise, the dried paint will ruin your brush. All right, so Thank you for doing this activity with me. Um, I will meet you back up at the easel. Okay, so for today's activity, uh, we read a book about things that make us happy, and then we decided to draw something that makes us happy. In the center of the circle, we used a small cereal bowl or a small salad plate to trace. You know me, I love using objects from the kitchen to create curves or circles. You know, why not? We use what we have at home. So also we thought about the colors because we wanted to choose colors that make us feel happy too. So remember, um, art can make you happy. The next time you're feeling down, why don't you take out some paper and draw something that makes you happy. I'll see you next time. And if you want to keep watching uh, at 4.20 in about 10 minutes, I think, I have another art episode coming on. Bye.